Yo, what's good, boxing fans? So, there's a few of us here. It's a Thursday night. Studio session predictions. No predictions tonight. We do got fights this weekend with Keith Thurman and Julio Diaz, as well as John Molina and Lucas Matisse, uh, which will be on Showtime. We're also a week um, away from Mayweather versus Maidana. That card, I'll be talking a little bit about that and you know this coming week i guess final thoughts about the entire card but uh i wanted to touch on a major story that's been uh hitting boxing as of this week and i've waited for you know the week to pass by and, and you know to get more information on this because as i learned with boxing man you can't take <laughs> uh headline news uh you have to take it with a grain of salt sometimes depending on where the sources are coming from and who's giving out the story but the big story right now in boxing seems to be Oscar De La Hoya's um, extension or, or, or I would say the olive branch being put out to top rank and Bob Arum for both companies to start working again you know because obviously you know if you've been under a rock for the past like three four years uh, both of these companies have not been working together um, I mean, I don't want to go into like details as to why there's a lot of reasons why, but uh, basically, you know, major fights that we can't get because both companies are not working together, you know, we're not able to see, you know, for instance, like, you know, I'd like to see a Ruslan Provotnikov and uh, Danny Garcia fight. Now, Ruslan is not with top rank, but he's an HBO fighter. And, uh, you know, with Danny Garcia, he's a Golden Boy Showtime fighter. Cause, and, and the networks do have something to do with this. But as of this week, Oscar De La Hoya has extended the olive branch, so to speak, to top rank and Bob Arum to begin working again. Now, Oscar De La Hoya is coming off a stint in rehab. Um, obviously, people are, are very well aware of that. You know, he's had substance abuse issues and he's done a couple or several stints in rehab so you know according to him this is uh part of his rehab to kind of rehash relationships or, or or to end feuds with people but lo and behold there seems to be some rift within the golden boy camp that isn't uh being spoken about a lot but i think it's pretty clear there's some rift going on now as far as golden boy and top rank are concerned i mean at least from from um, uh, my point of view and maybe a lot of fans point of view this is a step in the right direction I think it's been a disservice to the boxing fans that you know we've only been able to see uh, the fights within you know certain organizations you know like now top rank to give them credit I mean they're still working with the you know with the Bella promotions they're working with k2 they're working with banner and and you know they're fighting under the hbo umbrella but top rank seems to be working with other companies as were with golden boy they seem to have more of what you would maybe consider a ufc paradigm where they're only fighting within the structure of golden boy and showtime so and, and that's not to say that they haven't put on good fights either i mean you know the you know we we got a, a card coming up with uh, you know, Luis Collazo and Amir Khan on the undercard of Mayweather, Maidana, and then, you know, Carlos Molina Jr. and Adrian Broner. I mean, you could take it for face value if you like, but I think, you know, they're trying to make the best fights possible. But in general, I, I think the best matchups are still to be made. And once these companies kind of put their feud together or maybe come up with some type of resolution for both companies to really a break bread evenly and and put on these fights but to be honest with you i i think more so than the promoters i think the biggest obstacle is the cable networks now burt sugar made mention of this years ago i mean obviously before you know he passed away but um several years ago i saw an article and, and he mentioned it in an interview and i try to look for it on youtube but he said that the day the cable networks get into the promotional business of boxing is when shit's going to hit the fan. And if you look at it, I mean, HBO and Showtime do have a lock on certain fighters and it's preventing certain fights from being made. I mean, I'd like to see a Golovkin versus a Peter Quillen fight, but, you know, we can't see that technically right now because Golovkin fights under HBO in the States and Peter Quillen fights under Showtime, you know, so... 
and, and on top of that, it's not it's not that big of a fight to where they can make it a pay per view fight, and, and both teams come together to try to break bread on pay per view because that. In, in essence has been done before for big fights such as Mike Tyson versus Lennox Lewis where Don King and and um uh top rank got together it, or, I don't know if Don King was actually actually that was a situation with HBO and Showtime but top rank actually I think they won the purse bit I could be wrong but you know those are situations where it was a big enough fight and both networks and both promotions came together and, and made the fight happen which is why I think I'm I'm still kind of surprised that the Mayweather Pacquiao fight wasn't made at, at that level to where both networks maybe could come together and, and put the fight together. But I, I think also we're living in a different world as far as how money is made in boxing these days. So uh, back to back to top rank and Golden Boy though. Um, now now mind you, this this may be a little long of a video because there's a lot to talk about, but. As of recent, we've seen um, there's an upcoming fight between Gary Russell Jr. and um, forgive me, I forgot his last name, but Lemonchenko, you know the the you know the the amateur who came up basically throughout the ranks as an amateur and has only had three professional fights, but um, is two and one in his last in his last three fights. But his amateur background is so huge that he was already put into like a top spot. Now, both of these guys are set to fight June 21st, and Lemonchenko is signed with Top Rank, and Gary Russell signed with Golden Boy. But the, in this situation, what happened was Golden Boy won the purse bid, so they're the ones promoting the fight. Now, I'm not 100% sure if Top Rank's going to have their logo on, on the, the, the ring mat or above the lights, but according to Richard Schaefer, it, it's, a, it's a Golden Boy promoted fight, period. And Lemonchenko's actually getting the higher of the end, the 60-40 deal. And there's there's reasons for that. I mean, I, I'd have to read up on it again. But, I mean, I, that's something that, you know, most of you can research. But um, what most would think is this is a, a step in the right direction for a, a top-ranked golden boy um, for, for both of their companies to work together. While Oscar De La Hoya is singing one tune, Richard Schaefer's still on the other side of the coin saying that he, he wants nothing to do with top rank. And that further lets me know that there may be some disagreements or maybe a little bit of a split when it comes to talking about Golden Boy promotions. Now, Oscar De La Hoya has been out of the limelight as far as the company's concerned since he checked into rehab literally days before the Canelo Mayweather fight, which surprised a lot of people. But since then, I mean, he's been on this tip about like trying to mend the relationship with him and Aram. And even Aram has gone out to say, like, I never really had a problem with Oscar De La Hoya. It's more Richard Schaefer. So, you know, this is, the, I think within the next few months, man, I think we're going to start to hear more and more things maybe coming out of the Golden Boy camp. Because when you have really the president of the company saying, look, I want to work with the rival promotions so we can give the fans the fights they want to see. I don't know any fan that's going to be against that. You know what I'm saying? So if you think about it, man, like I think the pressure might be on Richard Schaefer's end to be like, yo, like, why aren't you jumping on board for this? Now, there's more of it that we may not know as far as business, as far as how this works with the networks and and so forth but um at least for me being a boxing fan i think this is the best scenario you can make man like i said the biggest obstacle i think is going to be the networks because you it's going to be tough for them to make even just like hbo championship boxing or showtime championship boxing type of fights if you have one guy on Showtime and one guy on HBO, but do, do you work it in a situation like how they did with the Lemonchenko versus Gary Russell fight where it's like, you know, you win the purse bids. Uh, you know, it's 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 kind of tricky, man. I, I think at the same time, something has to be made of it. You know, you, you there has to be some type of resolution where both companies realize that a, they're doing a disservice to the sport, keeping these in-house fights going within the cable networks. Um, I think B, you know, I think both companies can still break bread evenly. Like, you know, because I'm, I'm just thinking of fights like Guillermo Rigondeau versus Leo Santa Cruz. I mean, that's another fight that is not a pay-per-view fight, but who, who, what boxing fan doesn't want to see that fight? 
You know what I'm saying? And, and then you take like, let's say Mike, Mikey Garcia versus Abner Mars or Nonito, I mean, or even Nonito Donaire versus Abner Mars, a fight that, you know, we were wanting to see two, three years ago. You know, I mean, I mean, and that's just, and that's just like me picking fights from out of the air. You know, I mean, there, there's, I mean, let, let's take a Triple G versus uh, Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> you know, I mean, again, these are fights without the restrictions of the promoters and the networks that can be made and, and i don't see how this is going to hurt the sport at all you know this is in my opinion a step in the right direction we've been wanting to see this and and look i'll be the first to say that don't don't expect like an overnight um you know hug and kiss from both golden boy and top rank because like i mentioned there seems to be an inner riff in golden boy that's been pretty present for the, for the last several months maybe a year and I think that situation maybe has to be mended first before there's any true um, co-promotions between both companies, man. Because, look, at the end of the day, Oscar De La Hoya is the president of the company. And, I mean, I think he has the the higher share in the company, or at least in relation to to um, Richard Schaefer. Now, I don't know if Richard Schaefer is planning his own... <laughs> promotional company because as, as far as i could see him and and uh, al Heyman are attached to the hip as far as the fighters golden boy signing and, and the management deals that al Heyman is signing for these guys so you know it, it, it's a bit of a tricky situation but one of the other big stories or rumors that are coming out of this whole golden boy and top rank deal or, or, or you know potential pro co-promotions is Oscar De La Hoya threw out the notion of a potential Manny Pacquiao versus Canelo Alvarez fight. Now, let me first say that this is Oscar De La Hoya putting the promoter's hat on and just getting people talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, do I think that fight's going to ever happen? No. <laughs> for the for, Basically because, first off, Canelo Alvarez is in a fight with Erislandi Lara coming up July 12th. That, honestly, I don't think people should overlook that fight okay that is not gonna be an easy fight for canelo but on top of that the fight isn't even at 154 pounds i mean it's already been noted that the fight's gonna be at 155 maybe 156 catch weight because canelo uh is dating you know stemming back from the angulo fight he can't make 154 anymore you know his body he's growing out of the junior middleweight division and with manny pacquiao he, he's barely a welterweight you know what i'm saying i don't think pacquiao has ever weighed anything over 145 as a welterweight and even with that being said he comes in like 147 148 fight night and, and and even the last fight he had a junior middleweight which i thought was a bit of a farce you know that the catchweight was at 150 against margarito and he didn't even weigh up over 145 he weighed like 144 for that fight you know so that that fight should have been a welterweight but i just think that fight is just um just to get people talking and obviously I've, I've been on the message boards I've, I've seen some of these different forums where the fans are going crazy they're oh man that fight's gonna be crazy but I'm like let's come down to earth a little bit okay but Manny Pacquiao is not gonna go above 150 Canelo Alvarez can't even make below 154 let alone 152 what he made for Mayweather and even at that point he looked he looked a little dry making that way not not to give excuses as to why Floyd won I thought he would have beat him at 154 anyway but Look, man, Canelo's on his way to becoming a middleweight. So I think all that is just speculation, talk, them throwing that out there just to get people to like me to talk about it. <laughs> but um, I don't think that fight is going to happen. Realistically, I think Manny Pacquiao's next fight is between Alvarado and Marquez. And I think for Canelo, I think a big money fight for him would be the winner of Cotto versus Martinez in the fall. I don't, I don't think September, but if they set up a November day, I mean, that's... That's a big fight for Canelo, like the winner of that. So, um, besides that, I'll, I mean, as far as both companies are concerned, man, I think this they, they need they need to you know fix the, the the whole situation with them not doing business together. I think they're missing out on very big potential fights. Not only that, but I think both companies need to like look into the future. And, and, and look at the sport without a Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather because, look, the reality is, is that is going to be a reality in the next two, three years. So when you look at the landscape of the sport, you, you I mean, th there shouldn't be any reason why these companies can't do business together and can't create big events and big fights. Because if you want to start co-promoting 
uh, uh, not I want to say co-promoting, but you want to start putting on big pay-per-view cards and you want to make some real money, put some of these fighters, I mean, do a, a, a real co-promotion. Do, you know, a, a top rank versus golden boy in a sense situation where you have a big main event followed by maybe two, three solid co-main events. You know, because if they're doing that, if they're doing that under one banner, you know, think of the other fights you can make and think of the money you could still make anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it, I, to me, it's a no brainer. I, I just think it, it, it comes down to, you know, just one company wanting to soak in all the benefits from the pay-per-view shares and and so forth, which, you know what, again, is understandable, too. But I think at the same time. Um, you you run the 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 well dry doing that, and and I think that's sort of kind of happening right now with both promotions. You know, looking at their landscape of fighters and be like, shit, man, we we really need to create some real fights. So I don't think this is gonna be an overnight thing. I think maybe within the next year or so, we're gonna maybe start to see if this is going to come to fruition because. Like I said, man, they're running out of big fights to make. And I can, I mean, I'm not going to do it in this video, but I could run down a list of fights that I love to see between both companies. And, and and even both networks, too, because it's not just Top Rank versus Golden Boy. I mean, it's really, if you take a step back, it's really Showtime versus HBO. You know what I'm saying? Because HBO has, still has other, other promotions that they do business with. And Showtime only strictly does, you know, Floyd's Fighters and, and Golden Boy. And that's it. So... I think for me, you know, it just increases the value of, of the sport when you start putting the very best against the best. And look, people want to shit on the UFC and, and shit on their paradigm and shit on the fact that Dana White, you know, doesn't pay these fighters. Like, I, I agree to an extent with that. But the thing about them, though, is that for the last four or five years, man, they have put the best against the best. I mean, GSP and Anderson Silva we're all fighting number two guys or number one guys for four or five years, man. It wasn't, I mean, if you look at their resumes, I mean, you can follow UFC or not. I mean, but the reality is, is that all those guys have fought number one, number two, number three guys consistently. It wasn't a situation where, oh, this is a big money fight. Oh, they fought all contenders. And in boxing, that's all we really ask for, man. I mean, is for these fighters to fight the best name, best fighters available and even beyond like just the namesake you know because you could have a name but you could be like not looking that great anymore you know it, it, it's it's um it's a situation i think in boxing that we need and it, and it used to be like that but obviously the 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 boxing paradigm has changed over the years as far as how money's made how pay-per-views are sold so i think for this relationship to be mended would help the sport a lot and you know, I look forward to it. I just go, I'm on the mindset of it's, I don't see it happening overnight. But I think Oscar De La Hoya extending the olive branch is a good thing. Whether his intentions or whatever, I mean, it's on him at the end of the day for, you know, he, he can't go back on his word and say, no, well, I never said that. You know, he's, there's an interview clearly him stating, like, I, I want to work with Bob Barham. I even want to hug him. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know, he might be getting some other type of treatment <laughs> along with the rehab, but, um, like I said, man, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but, you know, I think this is a good thing for boxing and I hope they work something out, man, where they have a, a, a cohesive understanding and, and, and where, where they, they, they're going to be able to like do business on a normal basis, just like how they were doing before, you know, I mean, they've had rips for years it's only until like the last three, four years that they just literally stopped working together. Because, I mean, you, you, you date back to the 2006 infamous Pacquiao signing where he signed with both Golden Boy and Top Rank. You know, people may not be aware of this, but Pacquiao still gives a very small cut of his fights to Golden Boy because it was like a quote-unquote breach of contract. So, um, and on top of that, they still work together. You know what I'm saying? They still did the De La Hoya, uh, De La Hoya Pacquiao, Hatton Pacquiao. Uh, and among other, you know, internal fights between Golden Boy and, and, and Top Rank. So I don't see why they can't do that again. It's just, I just don't think it's going to be overnight. So uh, let me know what you think about this. I mean, there's obviously going to be more coming about it. I just don't, I didn't want to just report on it like so quick until I got all the information I got. And um, like I always say, man, 
hit the links you know comment let me know what you think about this situation and as usual i'll be doing more fight predictions especially now that these fights are coming up between Cotto martinez canelo lara i still want to do one on marquez alvarado uh that'll probably be in the next week or so but like i always say stay tuned and like and like i always say hit the link subscribe and i'll be back soon peace